But yeah, let's go ahead and kickstart this thing. All right, we're ready. Awesome. Guys, well, um, hello everybody from around the world. Um, thank you so much. Good afternoon or um, good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, we hope that your, your week is off to a great start. My name is Christian Allier. I'm the co-founder and director of the Study Abroad Association. Uh, we have a, a great team here today. Uh, they'll introduce themselves uh, here shortly, but uh, everybody has some experience or extensive experience with uh, types of virtual study abroad. Um, and uh, we hope to, the main reason we're here today is to uh, share ideas and innovation and um, really help you bring these opportunities to um, as many students as possible, yeah? So um, I'd also like to thank CCID for working with us to promote the webinar. And uh, we greatly look forward to our uh, continual uh, collaboration. I personally believe that the reason that um, everyone is here today is because we understand the importance and value of study abroad and uh, international education. And um, we understand that these programs are essential and um, they must be accessible and available to more students, if not all students. I personally believe all students. Um, our current environment has prevented us from participating in what we consider traditional study abroad experiences. Um, however, with the current global situation, it has also provided us an opportunity to reevaluate and understand, especially now, that it's absolutely necessary to develop opportunities that can um, be accessible to the majority, no matter what global um, you know, circumstances we might be facing. So um, <clears throat> from the beginning, I think it's important that we understand that virtual study abroad is not a replacement for traditional study abroad, but rather a, um, an enhancement, right? So um, with virtual study abroad, we have the opportunity to reach many more students and faculty and actually further promote traditional study abroad. Um, we believe that with these virtual study abroad opportunities, uh, we're going to have far fewer limits, right? And that these will go hand in hand with existing programs. Um, this is just the beginning. This is going to continue to evolve and evolve and evolve. And really the sky is the limit um, with all this. So um, our mission at Study Abroad Association is simple. We strive to make international accessible, international education and study abroad accessible to all students and faculty, right? Um, we believe global education has no borders and should be accessible to all. So with that being said, let's get the webinar started. I'm going to pass it to my co-founder, Leonardo Gubinelli, coming to you from Italy. And um, let's do this. Ciao, Leo. One second here. There you go. Ciao, Leo. Ciao. Oh, ciao. Thank you, Christian. And uh, hi, everyone. Well, today we're going to talk about the virtual work connected to international education and study abroad. Below you will see an overview of all the sections that we're gonna cover during the webinar. I know that this is a very trending topic right now and some of you might already heard about these opportunities. Some, they don't know where to get started. Um, some lucky of you uh, might have the chance already to use it and, um, and experiment it. So despite at which level you are, um, today we have structured the webinar in a very simple and understandable way for everybody. So let's get going. Um, we have some interesting guest speaker that will introduce, introduce themselves in a second. Then we'll move on onto the current challenges that international education is facing right now and how COVID has accelerated the need for new innovative solutions. Um, we're going to move on to the analyzing the various virtual model that you can adapt um, to your global education and study abroad. So from the entire customizable full-length um, interactive study abroad program in virtual reality to live streaming seminar from experts in the field, on-demand supplemental virtual educational content, we're going to analyze COIL and third space uh, study abroad programs, very interesting. A practical example uh, from Valencia College. Also, we're gonna go into virtual pre-trip ads on that you can use at your institution. So we'll speak about grants and fundings, both internal and external to your institution. 
We'll wrap this up on how you can get started and uh, we will analyze various options that you can have. As well, we'll share with you some useful article and links and uh, at the end, finally, we will leave some times for some Q and A's and any other comments, feedbacks you might have or ideas or just say hi to us. <laughs> Moving on into the guest speakers. So again, I'm Leonardo Guinelli, the co-founder of Study Abroad Association, or also called uh, SAA. Some of you already knows us, and um, I'm actually happy to see some familiar faces. Thanks again for joining us today. And uh, for all of you that doesn't know us, we help community colleges and university with um, affordable and fully customizable faculty-led programs, both physically and now also virtually. Now, I'm gonna hand you over to Jerry Hansel from Valencia College, and uh, we're gonna have a round the table self-introduction of today's team. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate uh, you introducing me like that. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm coming to you from Orlando, Florida. Uh, my name is Jerry Hensel, and I teach uh, IT, and I've led uh, several different uh, study abroad trips to uh, Europe and South America, and I'm super excited to talk to you guys about uh, virtual reality and just 360 degree uh, experiences and how they can really get your students involved in any way, fashion or form when it comes to study abroad. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Stephanie. Hey everybody, I am Stephanie Dosher and I'm coming to you from a little bit south of Jerry in Miami, Florida. And I serve as the Director of Global Learning Initiatives at Florida International University. And our Global Learning Initiative, it addresses uh, global learning on campus, in the community, abroad, and online. Uh, we think of global learning as a process that involves diverse people in collaborative efforts to understand and address complex problems that transcend borders of difference. So it's not really what you learn about or where you learn about, but how you learn. And one of our newest global learning initiatives for the last three years involves collaborative online international learning, which is also known in other parts of the world as virtual exchange. Folks from a language uh, background might think of it as telecollaboration, but it's really strongly concerned with the design of the learning experience. So I'm very excited to now pass it off to Rich, who is going to, who is also a faculty member and is very interested in and concerned with course design. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm a professor of English uh, and also the faculty director of international education at Harper College, just outside of Chicago. Uh, Harper is, a, I should say, a proud CCID board member college. And I'd like to thank CCID and uh, Leo and Christian of Study Abroad Association for their visionary leadership in bringing us all together and moving this all forward. Uh, just a quick full disclosure, I'm probably the least tech savvy person on this panel. Uh, so I appreciate their indulgence and your patience, but uh, there's some really cool opportunities on this, uh, on this brave new front. So thank you, looking forward to today. Thank you, Rich. All right, guys. Um, so well, here we've listed uh, current challenges and solutions. I'm not going to read all these to you, but we are going to uh, send everybody the recorded version along with the PowerPoint version that you can explore um, at your own convenience. Um, basically, long story short, what we've done here is, you know, um, we've compiled a list of challenges and solutions, okay? So we're all familiar that study abroad has always had um, its challenges, right? Challenges that were present prior to uh, COVID-19. You know, things from um, risk management and uh, travel advisories, not being able permitted to go to a certain particular destination, for example. Um, programs that are financially out of reach for the majority of the student body. Um, programs not satisfying contact hours or, you know, learning outcomes programs that aren't accessible to non-traditional students, students who might work full-time, have family um, responsibilities, or programs that aren't accessible to students uh, that may have mobility issues, right, et cetera. The list really goes on and on and on. As we started developing these virtual experiences um, with institutions, we realized that the majority of these challenges um, were no longer present with the virtual model. 
it really, um, it really was a solution for the majority of the of these challenges and problems, right? So uh, when understanding this, we became very excited, static for that matter, because we realized that through virtual experiences and content, um, all students can now have access to international education opportunities. So the days of one percent or less than one percent um, of student body participating in international education programs that can be removed and it's actually possible to provide these experiences to 100 percent of the student body and it can be implemented in so many different levels so um, that those comparisons of these two columns really just opened our opened our mind and our perspective on the entire situation and um, this is why we've uh, we really accelerated in this area and we're bringing in experts from all over experts in this call and uh, from all over the world all over the country to make sure that um, this continues to grow, right? Um, we would really love to hear from you in the chat or, um, or through email um, challenges that your institution might have faced, um, solutions that you might have come up with internally at your institution for those challenges. And uh, we'll additionally, we'll share all of that with you um, in, the next, in the next days after we've received it and compiled it. So that way um, we can see if we can all grow from this. That's what this is all about, is sharing, uh, sharing knowledge and, uh, and resources, okay? I'm gonna go to the next slide here. Um, so we have different models of virtual um, study abroad, okay? We've defined four to five core areas of virtual study abroad experiences that can be implemented immediately or in the very near future, okay? When I say very near future, more or less along the same timelines that you might be used to with uh, traditional faculty led study abroad. So preparing one year to a year and a half in advance, right? Um, for a lot of these experiences, like the, um, the actual full length virtual reality or 360 degree um, study abroad, customized study abroad experiences, they take time to develop but that's because it's gonna be outstanding, you know? So um, keep that in mind that there are some things that can, you can start with immediately, um, ready for the fall semester, um, possibly even in the summer, but then there's other things for the, uh, full, the full immersion virtual reality experiences that may take a little bit longer to develop and implement possibly in, you know, over spring break when you might have done traditional faculty led or during the May semester, for example, right? And then throughout the summer, um, but yeah, just to keep that in mind, we're going to go into detail of all of these. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go over all of them right now, but as we go on and on, we're going to, um, go into uh, more detail about each one of them. All right. So entire customizable full length, um, virtual study abroad programs. These programs allow all students to have a immersive and interactive virtual study abroad experience, okay? So if they're uh, art students going to Italy for art appreciation, um, if they're biology students going to Costa Rica um, to study uh, you know, the flora and fauna or the botany, for example, whatever it is, if they're culinary students going to uh, Peru or uh, to Italy or Japan or wherever it might be, we're able to build these immersive interactive virtual study abroad experiences for the student body. These are all shot and filmed with uh, 360 degree cameras that range between 4K and 8K. And um, they're accessible. One of the most important things about this is that it's later accessible through all forms of technology. So mobile phones, tablets, laptops, desktops, TV monitors, etc. You can access all of this content in that way and still have an immersive and interactive experience. If you want to take it a step further, you can look at um, investing in uh, VR goggles, some at the low cost end, you know, uh, Google Cardboard, $15 more or less, um, other electronic versions that are in the $35 range, and other, you know, higher level, um, you know, products like Oculus through Facebook, for example. Whatever your institution might have access to, they can look at incorporating these into these courses. Um, but if they don't have uh, funding to invest in VR goggles and things like this, then you don't, you don't have to worry about it because you can still use the 360 self-navigation to be able to have the full experience. So either way, whatever type of technology that you have at your institution, you can still access this through whatever form of equipment that you have, a mobile phone all the way up to a laptop or desktop, et cetera. Additionally, 
This can all be plugged into all learning uh, management systems. So if you use Canvas, if you use Blackboard, et cetera, this will be accessible. So that's the beauty. The main word that we want to focus today on is accessibility for all students, okay? All right, so live streaming seminars from experts in the field. This is one of our personal favorites, okay? This is the opportunity to bring professionals from around the globe directly into your classroom or into your online classes to present and discuss various topics. I want you to imagine uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, medical professionals, artists, chefs, um, policy makers, et cetera, right? Directly to your classroom, to deliver seminar style with Q and A, um, you know, topics that relate directly to your curriculum. This is an opportunity to enhance your course, uh, be it in class or online in a very impactful way because we're getting real world advice from experts in the field from around the globe directly to, um, to your classroom. I'm gonna show you a, a short example of a live streaming series that uh, we started two months ago. Um, it's called Insiders Live. We stream it every Friday at, um, at noon Eastern on our Facebook page. We bring in experts from around the globe to show, to take us on a walking tour of their city. Normally it's a condensed version, about one hour to show the main highlights with um, lots of history, lots of culture, lots of stories, et cetera. Um, this Friday, we're gonna be visiting uh, one of my personal favorite cities, uh, Budapest, Hungary. Anita, a dear friend, uh, she'll be guiding that. So um, definitely, if you're free, join that. We will send that to you um, with all of the, uh, the uh, post-meeting information. So you can uh, dive in there, it'll be a great session. Um, the reason why, one of the main reasons why we started the live streaming series was because so many programs were canceled this year. Um, we wanted to provide, provide these opportunities for the students to be able to see at least a portion of the uh, locations that they were going to be visiting. And also, in addition to that, um, many of our family members, teammates, um, exceptional guides and group leaders around the globe are currently uh, without work because of this crisis. So we wanted to build something that could help them uh, sustain a little bit and also provide value. So. Um, I'm going to uh, share a little promo video uh, for you about, and by the way, these six, six destinations, these are the ones that have already happened and you can still see those They're about an hour long each. You can access those on the Facebook page to the videos, but um, I'm going to share this with you. Leo, just give me a thumbs up if you can, um, one second, resume share. Let me see here, new share. Sorry guys, uh, Rich and I are on the same page with technology. Um, <laughs> Google, all right, here we go. Now, this one here, all right. Oh, you can click on watch the video, the hyperlink. Yeah, no, no, this is it right here, this is better. All right, I think here, ba -ba -bum. one second. All right, cool, tell me, give me a thumbs up if the audio's good. Hi there, I have no light. Can you hear? Yeah, yes. all right guys. So, sorry about that. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hi there. I am no life. Is anybody here? How is it going? My name is Richie. Hi. Welcome uh, here in Amsterdam. We're in Berlin. My name is Francisca. I'm going to be your guide for, for the next hour or so. The idea in the old days was that you pay tax for how wide your house was. So Dublin is, uh, an old Irish way of saying, a, a black pool of water. But it's just one used to be. So this is the oldest standing site of continued human habitation in all of the UK. And that is Maria. Travelling is not just discovering the monuments of the sea, it's discovering the culture of the country. All right, guys, so that's just a little, um, a little uh, inside peek of uh, Insiders Live. Go here. Can you, um, All right. one second. Hello, everyone. That's the Belize Maya hieroglyphs. 
share screen. There we go. All right, can you see my screen again? Yeah. Yeah, perfect, thank you. All right, so um, we're gonna move on to our guest, um, to our guest speakers, uh, Richard Johnson, Dr. Richard Johnson from Harper College is next. He's gonna talk about um, his section and what he's doing. Thanks, Christian, I appreciate that. No, you're having pulled that off your way ahead of me, <laughs> in tech wise. Also, um, I wanna point out that there is a spelling on there, a spelling error on this particular slide. And I'm told that SAA will provide a free, no, just kidding, uh, if anyone catches it. Just kidding. Um, it's, it's definitely a cliche, but we know that as the world becomes more intensely interconnected, employers are increasingly requiring, demanding that college graduates have intercultural competencies that enable them to work effectively within and across cultures. Traditionally, study abroad has been the single most relied upon tool in our global and intercultural education toolbox to empower students to gain those essential global skills. But now with mobility frozen in its tracks by travel bans, stay at home orders, quarantines and remote learning, the traditional shortcomings of relying on a single tool have become more painfully obvious. All too often traditional study abroad programs are little more than cookie cutter excursions, focusing on holidays and heroes, foods and festivals. They're disengaged from host culture or if engagement occurs, it's desultory. Students are living in dorms with other international students. Programs are monolingual. They're disconnected from curriculum or curricula aren't tied to intercultural learning outcomes. Students are often overloaded, taking more than two or three classes. And traditionally, the demographics of study abroad are still a challenge and very homogenous. These challenges and, and shortcomings have made it all the more imperative that we, as international educators, lead the way in finding and using new tools to construct a brave new world of intercultural online learning. All right, even though y'all are muted, I can hear the collective groan out there. You're saying, what the heck does that mean? And what the heck are we gonna do about it? Next slide, please. You got it, here we go. Well, I'm really, really glad that you asked because today you're gonna hear about three different but dynamic and exciting tools. The first we're gonna talk about doesn't actually exist. So full disclosure right up front, at least not as we conceive of it. I'm partnering with SAA to create virtual globally infused educational material. The idea is that these will be curriculum based, grounded in learning outcomes and collapse time and space in a more dynamic and interactive way than existing modalities. They'll be interrogative and investigatory, truly heuristic in their design. Their goal will be to allow faculty to guide their students intentionally and encourage students to explore according to their own interests and imagination, creating a dynamic and adaptive remote learning environment. All right, I can still hear y'all. You're thinking, well, what the heck is that gonna look like? So indulge me for a minute, close your eyes. Now, imagine leading your students into St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican walk straight into the narthex, flanked on either end by the equestrian statue of Charlemagne. You stroll through the Porta Santa, you check out the chapel of the Pieta on your right, and then you proceed to the central nave and you gaze down that magnificent colonnade of 12 ionic marble columns toward the papal altar and Bernini's Baldacchino over St. Uh, Peter's tomb. And all of that in glorious 3D color. Or, I mean, if, as though that weren't cool enough, right? Imagine that when you walk in, you pause in front of Michelangelo's Pieta statue with an art class. And embedded in the representation of the grief-stricken mother is an informational pop-up about the material used, the composition of the piece, and how the artist combined different styles to create the masterpiece. Or you walk with a history class to the other side of the nave, and you stop in front of the monument to the Stuarts, commemorating James III, the old pretender to the English throne, and his, his two sons, Charlie and Henry. You ask students to tell you the story of Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. Or imagine you walk down the nave with an engineering class or a physics class or a math class, and you walk to the elliptical dome and look up at the intricate designs on, in the inside. Since we know the dimensions of the dome, a word problem is embedded at the summit asking students to calculate the weight and volume of the dome. All right. 
you get the point. It's like a psychedelic experience guided by a content area expert and instructional designer all wrapped up into one. It's immersive, but risk-free. It's mind-blowingly transformative, but it's legal. So that's what we're working on. Virtual, globally infused, inter interdisciplinary educational content. And now Stephanie's going to tell you about another really cool tool in our ever-evolving toolbox. So thanks. Thank you. Okay, Rich. after I get myself back together because my mind just got blown. <laughs> I mean, you're an amazing presenter and your passion really comes through. Thank um, you. I appreciate and, that. And, and you know what? It makes me think I want to work with you, right? Let's do it. <laughs> That's what this is about. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you teach English, and let's imagine I taught um, uh, like a math class, right? right? And maybe you teach, and you're teaching English in the U.S., and I teach a math class. Um, and you were talking about being in Italy, right? Mm -hmm. And I teach a math class in another part of the world, like uh, maybe it's someplace in Asia or someplace in Latin America. And together, as faculty, uh, imagine if the two of us said, "Well, you know, our students could work on a project together using." these virtual materials that study abroad association has created or any other materials that 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 we come up with um this is the essence of what collaborative online international learning or virtual exchange is all about it's um taking global learning in an online space kind of to the next level and it really involves faculty in this global learning experience as well so when we talk about the concept of a third space. I have a classroom, Rich has a classroom, but together we could create a third space mm -hmm. where our students who are in completely different parts of the world with different perspectives, different knowledge, different skills, maybe even disciplinary backgrounds, different linguistic skills can come together to exchange and produce new knowledge. Um, COIL is really about bridging borders. It acknowledges that there are all kinds of borders, geographic, cultural, disciplinary, linguistic. But what we're going to do as faculty together when we're embedding a collaborative online international learning experience into our courses is we're going to design to bridge those borders while our students remain embedded in their home country, in their home classroom, or even in their actual homes, because COIL can be embedded into a face-to-face, -face, a hybrid, or a fully online course. The cool thing about COIL is that, yes, it could involve all kinds of really, really cool virtual reality and, and all kinds of amazing applications that students can use together, or it can just be done the entire thing with a single smartphone um, and using WhatsApp, just as an example. We had a COIL experience uh, it, with two countries, with Ecuador and Venezuela recently. And I don't have to explain to you what the challenges would be, especially working with our colleagues in Venezuela. Students worked together on a project. It happened to be about Zika virus, right in the middle of this global pandemic. The students never met synchronously until the very last week of their six week project together. The entire time, they used WhatsApp and Google Docs to do work together. But because of the way that the three faculty member designed the project and the experience, students wrote in their reflections, completely unprompted, that this was like having the study abroad experience that they were never able to have in their college career. And that this was an experience that gave them real opportunities to work with diverse others internationally that they felt gave them the kinds of experiences in their college career that they had not had that would prepare them to work with diverse others online and in person. So um, these experiences usually last about between four to six or eight weeks. They can happen in almost any discipline. And if you just go to the next slide, they involve basically three main components. So the first thing we're going to do when we're designing a COIL experience between two or more faculty and two or more countries, two or more institutions, two or more languages, is we're gonna think, 
how do we get each other to know each other and create some social presence and some trust when we're just meeting each other for the first time. So we're going to create icebreaker activities for our students that will happen usually at the beginning of the exchange, the beginning of the collaboration, and maybe multiple times throughout. And then we're going to design a collaborative task that demands the diverse knowledge, skills, perspectives, experiences of the students participating. And that is an art form. Finally, we're going to have reflection throughout the experience because we know in our work in international education and study abroad that the learning happens in the reflection. We have an experience, we're seeing the world in a different way, we're having that kind of cultural contrast. How are we going to build that into a, a deeper, broader, richer conceptualization of ourselves, others, and the world around us? So it's really about curriculum design and it's about collaboration but it can fold in to it all of these really cool uh, virtual reality and, and content that our colleagues are creating. So I think I should hand it over to a deeper look at how we could do that. And that is with Jerry. Jerry, would you share with us your story? Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Um, it's <laughs> funny that you mentioned that COIL experience because I actually had a uh, uh, the experience which I'll share with everybody in just a few minutes that happened this past year or so. Those three phases that you mentioned, I just remember going through those three phases, but I didn't actually know that I was actually going through those three phases of COIL. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting. So um, hi everybody, once again, I'm in Orlando and I just thought it would be important to start off with talking a little bit about the future of using technology in study abroad. So what I've done here in the first part is to really showcase how we could take this idea of virtual study abroad to the next level. Because if you look at some of these statistics from uh, Higher Ed Connects, you can actually see that virtual reality or any type of 360 degree uh, immersion is gonna, by 2025, is going to include around 15 million different students. And uh, the other one, which I'm really excited about because I've been trying to do something with this for like the last two years, and it's only really because of what happened with COVID that's really come to the forefront, I think, um, is that by the year 2021, you're going to see that 60% of all the institutions are going to use some type of VR in their learning environments, whether it be COIL, uh, whether it be virtual study abroad, virtual reality, um, anything like that. So I just thought it'd be important to share that information right off the bat. Um, so today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give you some highlights of how I've used technology in my uh, study abroad courses, uh, but also in my day-to-day -day classes as well uh, here at Valencia College uh, in Orlando. Um, so we're gonna start looking at some of the advantages of just using virtual reality or technology in the classroom with uh, study abroad. Um, so the first thing I'd like to direct your attention to is um, one of the challenges that I have as a professor and maybe that you might have as well as a teacher is sometimes it's hard to get your students to feel energized about your content. And so I've noticed a remarkable um, intent with students trying to learn more when we actually use any type of virtual reality technology or 360 degree um, immersion because what it does is it really takes what they might learn in a book and actually brings it to life so they can actually experience it. And one of the things that I really try and do is, is I really try to um, engage um, my students with these different um, immersion techniques. Um, but on the other hand, the other thing that I think which was a surprise to me, which I think is really important is if you're a study abroad uh, faculty member or if you work in an international study abroad office, one of the hardest things to do is to recruit students to actually go on your trip or to be part of your program. And I actually, uh, during International Education Week last November, I took one of our Oculus headsets and I was actually um, approached by about 50 different students in a two hour period. And I asked them point blank, where do you wanna go in the world? And some people said Antarctica, some people said India, Brazil. And so what I would do is I would actually bring up a 360 degree experience for them. And uh, I'd play for like 45 seconds, but once they took those goggles off, they were ready to sign up and actually go on the trip. And once again, that was, that was actually students coming to me 
they were telling their friends to actually um, go on the trip because they, they experienced it firsthand. They could actually see it and live it. So I think that's the, one of the other uh, good side effects is the recruiting aspect. Um, the other thing I think also, which Rich mentioned earlier, is the beauty of this technology is it can really be used in any discipline. And so I teach in a STEM field, and sometimes it's really, really hard to get students to buy into study abroad by going over to a country like, let's say, Ireland to study technology. And so by using these different um, technology aspects, you can actually take them on a, on a excursion before you actually get there. And maybe it's gonna be also for those people who can't afford to go too. So like we talked about accessibility, it really reaches those students to uh, give, them, give them the opportunity to go on a study abroad trip if they can't afford it or if they um, will be able to in the future, especially with what's going on um, right now. Um, so I think um, what I'm gonna do now is also talk a little bit about what uh, Stephanie talked about with COIL. Um, last um, summer, I was approached by a director of study abroad in uh, Brazil, and she wanted to um, partner with us to do a virtual exchange with our engineering students and her engineering students. So we actually went through those three phases that uh, Stephanie mentioned. Um, in July, we started meeting with the professors. We did a couple of icebreakers just to make sure we, bu we built trust, and we uh, created a project uh, using programming that would allow the students to work together in fall 2019 to accomplish a certain task. So in September, once we um, got everything set up, we actually had an icebreaker where the students were able to meet uh, online and talk to each other about uh, different cultural aspects from Brazil and the United States, just so we could learn more about each other and understand each other. And then once that uh, session was over, we introduced the uh, project to the students and they actually collaborated on different teams we had some students from the US on the Brazilian team and vice versa. And they had to meet, uh, you know, um, famously mentioned by Stephanie using WhatsApp and also Skype over the semester in order to communicate. And then uh, once they got their projects done in uh, December, we actually met online and they presented their results. And the engineering project was a huge, huge success. In fact, um, before all this happened with COVID, we were, um, scheduled to meet online and present this for the next term for our next cohort of students. Um, so we're still going to do that, but we might have to do it in a different type of environment as everybody can see right now. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is this is really living proof that you can actually do this, whether it's virtual exchange or immersive 360 experiences. So I just want to uh, start off with that. Okay, so next slide, please. The next question is how do you do this? Okay, so as a I don't want to call myself a technology guru, but I love technology. And one of the things that I like to do is use different software platforms. So the one that I've um, uh, experimented with the most is called Adobe Captivate. Um, in, the in the picture here, you can actually see an idea about Adobe Captivate. There is a picture of a room on the top, and there's actually a picture of um, some computers on the bottom. It's actually two separate pictures, but in the picture above, you'll actually see some red square boxes. These are actually called hotspots, and these are all interactive. This can work directly in your browser like Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Mozilla Firefox, or 3D goggles. And if you click on those little icons, you can either link that to a Wikipedia page, for example, or you can link it to a YouTube video. Um, but what I'm most excited about is the assessment piece. Um, I've looked at several products and Adobe Captivate is one of the only ones that I found where you can actually link it to an assessment. On the bottom there, on the bottom picture, you'll actually see an example of the assessment. Uh, you have several different choices of multiple choice, true, false, uh, fill in the blank. You can even do essay questions if you want to, although that might be kind of hard to do if you're to type out your answer in VR goggles. Um, and so what happens with the score is you can have them retake it again. Or what you can actually do is, which I think is fantastic, because as a teacher, um, I don't like to reinvent the wheel. You can actually take your score and link it directly to your learning management system, whether that be Canvas or Blackboard. So everything is really like a one-stop shop by using Adobe Captivate. Um, so right beneath that, I've actually listed uh, three different um, use cases that I've used Adobe Captivate in my courses. 
Um, so this summer term, I was supposed to go to Ireland. And before we um, were supposed to go, we actually met for our pre-planning. And one of the things I had my students do was actually go to a Google data center in Ireland through using VR headsets. And they actually got to take a tour of the actual Google data center before we actually got there. Um, the second thing I, I thought uh, about doing, which I actually implemented as well, was the fact that I wanted the students to get a sense of what the area would look like before we actually got there. So um, I created a VR experience, uh, 360 experience um, at the hotel where we were gonna be staying the subway area, how to get there. In fact, I, I told the students to uh, recreate the directions on how to get from the hotel to the subway. That way I knew for sure they knew how to get back home if they were to go back on their own. Um, and then we also created um, hotspots in the 3D experience for, um, uh, for landmarks and um, po other points of interest. And then lastly, like I mentioned, um, I just can't stress enough, hopefully you can tell by the excitement of my voice, the assessment piece, is really, really what brings it home to me. Because I can really measure what the students have learned and picked up on their experience when they're actually going through uh, their semester abroad or whether in your, your classroom and you wanna show a, a virtual experience to them uh, with study abroad opportunities. So hopefully my experience will help you uh, look into or capture uh, what I found to be very rewarding as a professor and teaching uh, students, at least in my discipline, um, that being IT. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it back over. And thanks again for Leo and Christian for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak and uh, present my information. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jerry. <clears throat> All right, Leo. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. I knew I should have gone after you. Um, <laughs> before I carry on with, um, with the webinar and before um, the question gets too long, um, I don't want to run out of time. We have a couple of questions. Once it was for uh, Stephanie. It's basically um, from Maria Dietrich. Apologies about the pronunciation. Um, Stephanie mentioned overcoming linguistic differences in COIL. Yeah. Are those two classrooms still communicating all in English or um, award these students um, second language learners? Exactly. That's a really, really great question. So we have um, basically a variety of linguistic situations going on. So in that particular uh, trilateral collaboration, um, we had students, all of the students spoke both English and Spanish. So the faculty encouraged students to use their language of choice to make it a multilingual exchange. We have another exchange going on between um, political science students at FIU who speak predominantly English and Spanish and then also they're collaborating with students who are in Belgium in Antwerp and those students are learning English so the political science students are interviewing the students about uh, European politics right now and the students in Antwerp are producing in English those are recorded exchanges and the students in Antwerp are graded, assessed based on their oral production. And the students in Miami are being assessed based on how they integrate the interview materials into their research papers. Uh, and then we have other models, but, but we encourage the linguistic uh, differences and overcoming those barriers by using translators, by using peers, all of the different ways we need to do this outside of the university, we just bring it right into the COIL collaboration. All right. Thanks, Steph. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, Jerry, we have a couple of very quick questions. If you can keep it very quick, um, I'll shoot it to you. One, Kate DeGraff, do these programs uh, work with the Moodle course management system? That is a very, very good question. Um, I do not know specifically, I'll be honest, because I have not used Moodle before, but um, so basically without getting too technical, uh, one, of the, one of the things that you want to look for is if your learning platform can use what we call a SCORM, I'm going to type that in the chat room after we get done, it's called S-C-O-R-M. This is basically a software package that will take your 360 degree experience and implement it directly into um, your learning management system. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say is you probably want a little more research on Moodle to see if they can accept SCORM compliant modules. 
And I'll put that in the chat room afterwards. And then what's the second question, Leo? All right. Um, this is um, very, another quick question. Jerry, do you have pre and pro um, and post results? Pre and post results. Oh, of the learning experience. So yes, I was actually going to be typing that into the uh, chat room, but we got caught uh, here face, uh, face to face. So that's great. So when I did the quiz results, uh, most of the students really didn't understand um, the Google Data Center as far as the different parts of it. And so what we did is we, they, they went through the tour, then we had a discussion about the different points of interest inside of the Google Data Center, like networking cables, uh, servers, just to give you an, an example. Uh, when I, don't wanna get too technical. And then uh, afterwards, they went back again and they took the quiz again and they were able to identify all of the, the different parts in the system that we discussed um, based on when we had our discussion in class. So they had uh, some preliminary results, which weren't so good, that was expected, but afterwards they retained that information and they were able to go through and see exactly what we had talked about. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that answered your question. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. And uh, if we have some times at the end, we can expand on this. Sure. All right, so virtual pre-trip add-on. Um, so below you can see some example of virtual pre-trip add-on that you can use uh, to your advantages. So to begin with, we have virtual pre-assessment cultural competency tests that faculty can use to have a better understanding of their students. How does it work? So students can participate in virtual interactive pre-trip assessment tests. We're now realizing that pre-assessment and cultural competencies have become an important area of study work programs. And now, with the addition of virtual technology, we have the chance to take this up a notch. So this will help the, fac the faculty identifying how students are perceiving both like the differences and the, the diversities among the culture they will interacting with. Moving on, after that, Another thing you can do is to add cultural awareness training. Now, here it gets interesting. Um, in fact, thanks to these ads on um, and technology available to the students, they will be able to immerse themselves in um, virtual 360 and interactive training. This, this will give them a better understanding of the cultural etiquette of this community. So, just take as an example and imagine all the all the case all the scenarios that Richard brought to the table before um, or for example entering a local store in South Korea or in Japan and um, our local guide is about to pay to the cashier and will he pay with one hand with two hands what's the right things to do here well I'm not gonna tell you now think about it let us know at the end of the webinar um, but again, all those are example and uh, important factors that the student will have to figure out themselves before any physical programs happen. Um, yes, you can also have, um, you can also help to travel safer and reduce risk. In fact, um, you can adopt those techniques to enhance your risk management and um, emergency protocol by adding on-site virtual immersive experience. So, of course, having the students um, identifying the potential threats or nuisances will in turn increase the responsiveness and the awareness um, once they're physically actually going there. This last point is uh, self-explanatory, but nonetheless, we all know the importance of uh, smart travel. So virtual example of packing demos, uh, map navigation, maximization of time and other elements are also available in virtual realities. So again, all the above are useful to destroy um, stereotypes, doubts, fear students might have about other country or cultures, and, and instead replacing with uh, motivation, curiosity, and the will to go and find out more themselves. So, I'll now end the mic to um, Richard again, that is gonna talk about grants and funding, which I'm sure most of you will find this interesting. Thank you, Leo, I appreciate that. 
Uh, I'm sure that at this point, you're all thinking, gosh, I, that stuff, this has got to be expensive. This is going to cost a lot of money. So how do we pay for it? I mean, how do you do a captivated coil intercultural testing scenario online, virtually, remotely? Uh, there are two principal, as the slide indicates, two principal sources of funding for these sorts of projects. The internal sources are primarily those offered through your college or university. They're typically associated with faculty and or curriculum development around teaching and learning. Some may even be specific to incorporating uh, technology in the classroom. We at Harper have, have both varieties. Uh, in addition, many institutions also have an affiliated educational foundation that may offer grants as well. Uh, there are a slew of external funding sources as well. The list that I've offered here is not meant at all to be exhaustive, but instead to sort of give you a sense of the scope of these sources. They range from professional associations like CCID, CCHA, uh, and large national endowments like NEH or NEA uh, to national and international corporations and foundations. The fundamental takeaway that I want you all to have here is that there is money out there. You just have to apply it, find it and apply for it. And I know that that's easier said than done, but folks are often defeated by the misconception that there isn't any funding available for these sorts of projects. So get on out there, discover what you can do with somebody else's money. Thank you, Rich. All right, how to get started. This is back to you, Leo. All right. Um, thank you. I'll try to be quick. We're running a little bit out of time. So um, step one is to decide what your goals are in relation, in relation to virtual international education. Affordability, reduce risk, reach, in, reach more students, motivate more students, prevent low enrollment. Whatever are your goals, be specific and identify the main learning objective of this. Um, so after that, once you identified that, you can go and choose what type of virtual educational content or experience suits your students and institution the most. Be connected. Don't be alone. Speak to the appropriate people of your institution, study abroad department, uh, dean of academic affairs, the, of, the office of international education, and on. Um, you can join a task force or connect with various experts in the fields. So, for example, we have a private Facebook group called um, hashtag we are study abroad, where we share ideas, challenges, best practices, pictures, why not? Um, we also have a group, um, a WhatsApp group chat in Florida to connect and share information with, um, again, experts, decision makers, and passionate people to add value and bring innovation to the table. So, again, be, be creative and start connecting with the community around you now. Um, next is money. Find out what available funds you have. As Richard mentioned um, before, check with your institution internally for curriculum innovation, technology, global learning funds, or any other unused grant money that you might have available. As well as don't forget about external grants from government or private corporation. Um, determine a timeline, so the early you start, the better is the experience. Do not underestimate the power of virtual leverage here. There is a lot to plan and needed to make sure that these virtual experience are uh, done properly. So finally, execute, assess the results once the program is over. I know we have a, one question on the chat um, um, from Alisa. We're going to uh, answer that at the end. But yes, like in education, like in marketing, um, checking what you've done um, is one of the most important parts of the entire process. So, and, and again, make sure to mix it up. The virtual world is not meant to substitute the real one. So use this opportunity to enhance the internationalization of the curriculum to make global learning even more fascinating, to raise, our, to raise motivation, awareness, curiosity, and that it's all necessary in the real world, um, in the study abroad world, and right now. So I will end you over to Christian. Um, sorry for speaking fast. I, I don't want to go over one hour. He's going to wrap up the webinar and speak about how practically you can pull this off and the various models available. Hey, thank you, Leo. 
Okay, guys, this very common question, what are the most popular options and models? How do you do this? How do you implement this? So um, at the moment, since this is all uh, quite new, okay, a lot, of, a lot of sides of this, at the moment, um, the most popular models that institutions are adopting and implementing are to bring the virtual experiences and content to their institution um, consists of two options. Um, however, this is just the beginning. There's gonna be many, many, many other um, possibilities, but these are the most popular as of now as we're speaking. So the first is customized, okay? Customized are virtual materials and programs that are designed and created upon request. So this may be for a particular course, a particular trip, an area of study, a particular major, department, et cetera, right? We work directly with, um, with the departments, with the educators, et cetera, to develop this and tailor the content for the institution, okay? So this is per topic, per experience, customized, right? 100% from scratch. Uh, the next is a, uh, is a subscription model. Okay, the subscription model comes with pre-made continually evolving virtual educational content for various areas of study. Um, schools collaborate together to share their virtual content and experiences, providing a much larger library of resources. I want you to imagine kind of a, um, the Netflix of international education, for example. Okay, the beauty of this model is that it can be done at a minimal cost to the institution, sometimes even zero and a minimal cost to the students and allow the creation of much more content. So basically all the students and faculty who have access to, who are enrolled and have access to a um, official school email address will be able to have unlimited access to the virtual learning uh, materials. At the moment, we're working closely with CCID to facilitate this subscription model for various institutions, including community colleges, tech colleges, um, universities, et cetera. So um, all of this is possible and all can be done we just have to get creative. We have to understand how everything works internally at each institution, follow the dots, connect them, and uh, bring this to reality, okay? Moving on here. Um, we would love to connect with you. Um, we'd be delighted to schedule a meeting with you at your soonest convenience uh, to answer any and all of your questions, um, your concerns, et cetera, that you might have and start to look at possibilities of planning and implementing virtual opportunities for your student body, your faculty, et cetera. Um, the main reason that we're here is to make international education accessible to all, um, while making it as immersive and interactive and in depth as possible. So um, from the Study Abroad Association team, from our um, guest presenters today and um, colleagues, we, uh, we wanna thank you for making time uh, to meet with us. Uh, stay positive. Bright days are ahead. With crisis comes innovation and opportunity. And uh, take care and stay healthy. Most importantly, stay sane. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you. So uh, if you're able to stay on a little bit longer, we're happy to have an uh, open uh, Q&A in the chat room. And um, yes, thank you guys again. Thank you, Leo and Christian. Thank you, everyone, for all the panelists, my colleagues, and all the friends out there watching. Thank you, Rich. I look forward to uh, continuing to collaborate with you, my friend. Absolutely, yes. Right. And Jerry, Stephanie, let's keep in touch. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, this Why is exciting. We have, a, we have a question, please. Um, okay, send the links to CCID. Thanks, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Do you have any suggestion as to how one might proceed in reaching out about collaborating with others on something like this, in particular related to the theme we work with, sustainability offering in Costa Rica. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Please send us an email um, to either of these emails or give us a call and we can go uh, in, in depth with that topic. I love it. CCID is a great place to bring everybody together, especially at the community college level. Absolutely. And uh, just to reconfirm everyone who's still here, we will be sending all of this to you electronically, okay? So um, everything that we've covered, you will receive. And the recorded version as well. And um, again, the, talking about CCID, we're like uh, talking a lot how um, we can implement these for all their members in a very easy way, affordable. And um, so yeah, we will, we will send you the link and uh, Chris, and we will um, keep you posted on this as well. Miguel, who's the person to email? Um, again, on this presentation, you have all our like uh, contact information. You can 
email directly Krisha and I, and we can put you in touch with Stephanie, Richard, Jerry, whoever you want, or you want to talk to us. Um, you also have our telephone numbers right there. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped. You will receive this PDF on your um, email, so you will have all the information there as well. Leo, who do they contact to win the free VR study abroad program for catching the spelling error? <laughs> That's us. That's us. <laughs> okay. That's great. Man. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to throw me under the bus and say no, that's on you. Uh, Rich, you're going to be <laughs> developing it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it'll be low tech. Exactly. And again, if you want to find out more about CCID, Stephanie um, Stephanie Kelly is the current director and president. So contact air at info at ccidinc.org. Um, also, you can find their um, contact information on their website. And, but again, we will send you the information of CCID as well. Um, anybody else? Any questions? <laughs> Vanya, hi Vanya. We, we still have 75 uh, participants. We can start with the trivia part of it. <laughs> <laughs> So I think Chris, it's Leo's, the, Leo's what fan base. Right what was the right answer on the, the South Korea and Japan uh, way of handling money? Ah, uh, yes. Thailand as well, too, of course, always. There was a question in there regarding um, research and language acquisition and COIL or virtual exchange. I am not um, a language, languages are not my expertise, linguistics is not my expertise, but I do know that in the field of languages and linguistics, they have been doing this kind of online collaboration and language yeah. um, partnering for the longest, but it's known as tele-collaboration, T-E-L-E, -E, collaboration. So if one were to use that as a search term, I think one would find some good research and in those journals that are focused on language acquisition and learning. Thank you, Steph. All right. Yeah, well spotted, Stephanie. Um, All right. Should we go ahead and wrap it up? If we don't yeah. have any questions. Oh, we had another one come in. There's great information. All right. Okay, guys, so just once again, um, if you need anything at all, we are delighted to speak with you. You can connect with us um, on the email addresses below. Any information you need, we'll connect you with it. And uh, thank you again for all your time. Have a lovely work week and um, take care. All the best, everyone. Yes, bye, bye everyone. Thanks for joining us Thanks, today. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Stephanie. Take care, everyone. Leo, thank you. Bye for now. Bye. I'm Thank gonna miss our much. calls, man. What are we gonna do now? <laughs> we can still have them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Virtual cocktail hour later at Leo's. Hey, there you <laughs> go. All right, All right guys. guys. Take, Take care, it everyone. easy. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, 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 everybody. Ciao, ciao. Bye, Kelly. Stephanie, you're on the line. Bye. All right. Creation is me and you now, <laughs> almost. All right, I'm gonna close up the webinar.